Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. You are a YouTuber. You ain't a boxer, mate. You ain't a boxer, mate. You ain't a boxer, mate. To many old school boxing aficionados, Jake Paul is viewed as an annoying distraction to the real championship fights that take place within the sport. To the younger audience, Jake Paul is an internet sensation that is bringing boxing a new set of eyes to a dying sport that hasn't evolved with the times. However, in the few years that he has competed in boxing against the likes of professional boxer Tommy Fury and former UFC champion Nate Diaz, the question still remains. How will Jake Paul look when he finally faces a highly skilled boxer? Let's break down some film and figure it out. As the rounds begin, Jake likes to probe with his lead hand and quickly level change to set up a stab jab. This is a very common and effective move used in boxing, used by the likes of Andre Ward and Floyd Mayweather, amongst other top fighters. However, his issue isn't within the strategy, but the execution of the move. When he throws a stab jab, more often than not, he overreaches and steps far too wide, dragging his back foot to regain balance. So he's stuck on the front foot, leaving him susceptible to step back counters, as well as check hooks on the way in, almost identical to the same mistake Errol Spence made against Pound for Pound King Terence Crawford and got punished for. In an attempt to land his backhand, Jake often lunges or reaches when coming forward. Due to this, his back foot typically comes off the ground, making him front foot heavy again and unable to quickly evade. More often than not, he goes into a dangerous forward shift that leaves him squared and available to be countered by a fighter who knows how to control distance. At a high level, it is likely that this mistake seals his fate as it did Rolando Romero's. Jake has a tendency to move back in straight lines when his opponents come right at him. As a result, he struggles with double and triple jabs and typically ends up on the ropes. Even if he doesn't end up on the ropes, he tends to shell up in an inactive high guard rather than angle out to reset him and his opponent's positioning. Even the likes of two-time undisputed Naoya Inoue will fail to get away with this mistake. Jake also throws a lot of mid-range jabs and often fails to anticipate counters. As stated many times on this channel, a single jab that doesn't require a step to land or reach your opponent is the most frequently and easily countered punch in boxing. In a poor attempt to probe in order to bait out his opponent's shields, Jake gets countered quite a few times. No high-level example needed here. Tommy Fury shows exactly why it's an issue. Similar to former lightweight champion George Cambosos, Jake leans his head a little over his lead leg, which ends up making him slightly front foot heavy. Jake chooses a wide stance, while Cambosos' stance is more narrow, but their similarities with the lean and lack of elite reflexes make them very susceptible to jabs. If you've watched most of Jake Paul's fights, you'd know his money punch is his overhand right in which he has stopped the likes of Tyron Woodley Unfortunately, Jake tends to have an obvious tell when he throws his overhand. Since it's more of a bolo punch when he wants to throw it, he'll drop 
uh, then carry his backhand low like he's carrying a football. Jake also tends to duck when his opponents initiate a fence with the jab. In many instances, this could be considered defensive responsibility or moving his head off the centre line. But like the theme of this film study, Jake's execution of the technique diminishes the effectiveness. Jake will duck for jabs or jab feints, which can indeed be effective to avoid the jab. However, since his guard is often the low lead hand, Ducking a jab leaves nothing left but a shoulder to defend an opponent's backhand. Showing your defensive hand to a higher level opponent before the more powerful blow is thrown leaves the space and time for your opponent to change the trajectory and meet his target. We could have continued pointing out issues. At a cost, we could provide a complete analysis and strategy to beat the YouTube sensation for most levels of fighters. But all in all, Jake Paul's issues more than likely get him stopped at higher levels without our help. Is Jake Paul a good boxer? Unequivocally, yes, for a YouTuber who started boxing just a few short years ago. Thanks for watching.